The microbrand world is full of interesting creations. It can be quite overwhelming, particularly when you're just getting into watches. This is definitely me a few years ago. I started taking an interest in the big brands, but they were just too expensive. So as tends to happen, you might get drawn to Kickstarter, back a few watches and slowly get into Seiko and other micro brands, make plenty of mistakes and lose plenty of money. Over time, you find your own way and your own tastes, which makes it easier to cut the noise and recognize what would likely take a permanent place in your watch box. I've come to realize that micro brands that are backed by true artistry, a backer with a clear vision and little details that reveal themselves over, no pun intended, time is my niche. Dietrich watches have released some incredibly interesting watches, but they were all too out there for me much as I appreciated the bold risk-taking. If you haven't seen the Perception released in 2017, then you must Google it after finishing this video, of course. But when the SD1 Skin Diver was released, it took an immediate place on my mental waitlist. Here was a unique design with so much depth and originality. A dive watch without the bulk and so many small details that not only made sense to the overall concept, but tied in with the Dietrich Polygon design concept in subtle ways. What was worth some bonus point to me was that it's quite reminiscent of deep sea luminescent sea creatures, which matches my current obsession with deep sea exploration. So let's check out this round watch with six sides. If you like what you see here, I would love a like and subscribe. It means I can bring more of this to the channel and hopefully get better and better at creating fun and interesting content. Thank you so much. Handing this watch for the first time in person, there are so many aspects competing for your attention. The bracelet, the unusual shapes on the dial, and those intricate hands. So let's check out the dial first. The Fumet treatment that creates this gradient is literally my only complaint on this model which I think is due to the black. It moves from a light grey to a black in a fairly abrupt way, which I think probably works better on the blue and green models. And I do believe that the blue model was the team's favourite. But what is so interesting here and adds so much depth is the fact that all the markers, text and crosshair are printed on top of a clear sapphire piece mounted on top of the dial. In photography, we often talk about having a clear foreground, middle ground and background. And that's exactly what we see here. The fact that all these elements are floating on a middle ground creates a fantastic effect. There is talk of the follow-up SD2 not having this treatment with the sapphire dial, which sounds like a real shame to me, but let's see what they come up with. For a dive watch, not having a boring spec sheet printed is worth mentioning. I love this and I think more brands should do it. Do we need to see the arbitrary depth rating that we'll never ever visit? Or just trust that the watch will hold up should you at most dive to 10 or 20 meters? I think the latter. Another detail I've called out before is using your mother tongue on printed details. Emmanuel Dietrich was born in France, but close to the border and some German heritage, hence the Dietrich surname. So automatic becomes automatic. There is a date function here, and whilst inobtrusive, it is very hard to see, and buried far deeper than what you see on the product renderings online, where the date does appear to have been slightly enlarged. I think it's incorporated in such a nice way that it's hard to complain about it. But for the record, I think it's very hard to see the date at a casual glance in real life, and I'd gladly have left it off. I would like to think that the hands really complement the dial, and they are quite an accomplishment. I couldn't sleep the other night, and I was thinking, what would I have chosen for the hands if the dial was blank and I had to come up with an option myself? Simple fence post hands? Too boring. Sword hands? Too conservative. A combination of paintbrush and cathedral hands? Yes, spot on. But that's obviously not something I would have managed. 
They are perfect for this style and to me legibility is absolutely spot on. The next subtle detail is the bezel that holds the sapphire crystal and the sapphire bezel insert. Looking a bit closer, the rounded squares from the dial are replicated on its markers, as is the crosshair when lined up. But what only reveals itself upon using the bezel for its intended purpose of timing something is the coin edge sides broken up by six polished edge treatments, creating a very subtle polygon. It helps with the grip, and it's another little detail that makes ownership that much more enjoyable, since if you know, you know. The crown has no guards and is a good size. The Salita SW200 movement takes a little thumb forefinger finger power to wind, but what is far more interesting here is a fish. There is a fish on the crown and I love it. I've seen this on Ming's dive watch before. It has a little fish printed on the back in amongst the text. A fish on the crown is even better, if you ask me. The case is ever so slightly curved with jeweled lugs should you want to use something other than a supplied bracelet with its convenient quick release spring bars. The back is plain and ready to be engraved with no print whatsoever. But again, here's another little detail that I love, so simple yet so effective. There is an angled overhang, which gives the appearance of an integrated bracelet without having one. This obviously does wonders for the supplied bracelet, but it gives the appearance of any strap that you attach to this watch have solid steel end links. This is such a classy move and I love it very much. Check out the look on this Artem NATO strap that I recently acquired. See how well it fits despite being a NATO strap which by its very design never seems to custom fit any watch. So impressive. The supplied bracelet is another looker. I'd wager that most of us see this bracelet as integral to this watch, clearly designed to fit this and no other watch just perfectly. The polygon shape in the middle fully articulates and follows the curve of your wrist perfectly. It all comes together at the scissor clasp, and I think it's hard to argue that this is not the perfect choice for the design. It does feel a little flimsy, and the two ends flex a tiny bit, but I suspect that that is on purpose. I've had the clasp open once sporadically, after I clearly didn't push it down hard enough. I'll be interested to see if this is the choice for the SD2 also, since I know many people out there don't like these types of clasps. The loom really completes the look of a deep sea creature to me. It's very good and quite strong, but it's definitely the hands that last the longest, arguably the most important. All other markers, cool as they are, fade fairly quickly. I love these so much, so it would be nice if the glow was stronger on the next generation. I've waited a long time to handle this watch, it was quite the experience opening it up, even this review example without original packaging and spare straps. I genuinely think this is one of the most original and interesting watches that's come out in this century, at least for a price that's not just affordable, but also a piece that is genuinely attainable. In fact, you can go and order this black one right now at just over a thousand dollars. Quite a statement you might say, but think about it. How many watches have you seen that look like absolutely nothing else on the market, but it's not a prototype, not a Kickstarter campaign that may or may not deliver, it's not another plaything for the super rich, but has originality in spades. Dietrich, as a brand, has to respect the watch collectors, and the average person will probably also notice that here is something that is not your average piece. We don't wear watches to impress others though, and the most important customer here is you. We all know that this hobby is a sickness. We get bored and we sell to buy more. Have a Google yourself after this video and see how many secondhand SD1 you can find on the secondhand market. I found exactly zero of them, which should mean that collectors hold on to them, not because they sit in a safe to grow in value, 
but I dare say they are worn and loved. And that is the ultimate review in itself right there. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.